Good evening and welcome to The Strand. I'm Christina, the Director of Events, and I'm pleased to welcome John Glazer, here tonight to talk about his book, My Dead Dad Was in ZZ Top, 100% real, never-before-seen documents from the world of rock and roll. 100% fake. With this shocking tell-all revealing the all-true, 100% fake secrets about music's biggest names, John Glazer, a former writer for Late Night with Conan O'Brien, and the creator and star of Adult Swim's Delocated, is about to rock the world of rock and roll. John's writing has appeared in the New York Times Magazine, and he can be seen in the upcoming season of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Following his presentation, John will take your questions. He'll then stick around to sign his book for you, which you can purchase downstairs on your way out of the store. Please join me in welcoming John Glazer to The Strand. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. Much appreciated. Um, I would say let's just get right into it. So we'll dim the lights, if we could, so the slides will play. If this is how much the lights are dim, that's fine. No, no, not at all. No apology necessary. Hello. Welcome to My Dead Dad Was in ZZ Top. It was a long and arduous journey to get here, one that required a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and as you will find out later in the book, a little bit of cum. <laughs> and while I would like nothing more than to say that this book was a labor of love and that it was all worth it, I cannot because it was not. It was anything and everything but. It was a labor of pain and heartache and betrayal and anger and resentment and shock and sadness and stress and more pain and more anger. Walls were punched. A soul was searched, not mine. Animal ears were scritched and scratched to help soothe frayed nerves. It was never easy to get to the truth. I had to bribe. I had to blackmail. I had to bribe mail. Let this serve as a warning to anyone reading this, be he man, beast, machine, or the female versions of those. Woman. She-beast. Woman-machine who is considering embarking on his or her own quest for knowledge. Pure truth comes at a heavy, heavy price. For every dollar this journey cost me, it cost me thousands more in emotion dollars. It's a serious ratio between dollar and emotion dollar. The inspiration for the entire book is the following set of letters that I am about to read. These letters require a bit of a preamble and explanation, which begin with the passing of my father several years ago. I will do my best to condense a lifetime's worth of pain into a few short paragraphs. I didn't know my dad very well. My parents divorced when I was quite young. And my father and I had what I will generously call a peripheral and strained relationship. Rarely there for Little League games, cards on birthdays, that sort of thing. And when I found out he was sick and that it was terminal, I thought for sure that we would be able to find some way to resolve any outstanding issues and put our differences behind us. At the very least, I thought we would be able to establish a sense of closure and resolution so he could die and so I could move on and live in peace. Unfortunately, not only did this not happen, but what unfolded after his death only served to allow him to continue to torment me from the grave. I traveled back to Michigan to settle his estate. Various items to be sold or donated were packed into boxes, and other items, long since stored and in need of inspecting and appraisal, were taken out of boxes. 
It was a very profound experience, to say the least, getting to know my father through his possessions, trying to piece together the man I never really knew. I saw photos, books, plaques from various jobs, articles of clothing, just so many things I had never seen before, ever. And one of the things I discovered about him that I never knew, a piece of information that he figured wasn't worth sharing with his only son, was that he was in ZZ Top. <laughs> and not the band as we know it, he's not a part of the main trio, he was in an earlier incarnation of the band. In a box marked, do not show this to my son, I discovered a stack of letters that he had written to the guys in the band. And there were dozens, upon dozens of these letters, but I will share the four that I feel best sum up his experience. Or perhaps they're just the four that best sum up the father that I always longed and ached for. In any case, without further explanation, here they are. The inspiration for the whole journey, those easy top letters. <laughs> Hey guys, by now you know that instead of talking about stuff at rehearsals, I prefer to keep quiet, gather my thoughts at home, and write you all letters. I know you hate it and wouldn't put up with it if I weren't the, the greater Houston area's best keyboard player. Anyway, great rehearsal last week. I know you're not supposed to count your chickens before they hatch, but I think we're going to be huge. I mean, come on, what a lineup. Billy on guitar, Dusty on bass, Frank on drums, and Dave Glazer on keyboard. You gotta be kidding me. We'll be Houston's biggest soul fusion quartet in no time. Dave, I'm from Michigan. Just to let you know, I never lived in Texas. Never knew my dad spent any time in Houston. Letter number two. Hey guys, I'm sorry to throw some negative vibes your way with things going so well right now, but I have to say that I hate the name that we decided for our band. ZZ Top, I have no idea what that's supposed to mean, and I still have no idea what the Z's stand for, even after Billy explained it five times. But I do have to say that I at least like the top part of ZZ Top. So I'm suggesting that we drop the Z's and focus on the top part. Here are some band names I thought of. Tip Top, The Tip Toppers, Top Hat, Top This, Take It to the Top, Dessert Topping, the four toppings, spin top spin, straight to the top of the world, the on top of old Smokies, top top till you drop, and finally, TT zap. <laughs> Sorry guys, I couldn't resist putting it in. I have more names, but we can uh, just go over those at rehearsal. But give it some thought guys, ZZ Top is lame. He writes in bigger font. P.S. I saw that movie Midnight Cowboy after rehearsal. Don't bother seeing it unless you're into weird pornos. <laughs> Dave. Letter three. First of all, I can't believe you guys didn't like any of my band names, even some of the other ones from the list. Top of the morning. Bad tippers, good toppers. When the red, red robin goes top, top, topping along. Stop sign minus the S. But I've been outvoted and I'll go with it. Just don't expect me to smile too much during our shows. Now, moving on to the suggestions of us all growing beards. Manicured, stylized beards that go down to the middle of the chest. Please. There's no way we'll get any backstage vagina with those things. I'm glad at least Frank agrees with me on this one. If you guys want to go ahead and grow them, by all means, be my guest. Just don't go looking for any apartments in Vaginaville, because there won't be any vacancies. I'm sorry to, hard, to hold such a hard line on this one, but I don't look good with a beard, and something that long would just get in the way of try, me trying to play my keyboard anyway. So thanks, but no thanks. I'll just keep my ponytail. Just don't be surprised when I'm the only band member who smells like vagina. It'll be from all the vagina I'm getting. Dave. Letter four. Well, I'm sure this will come as no surprise, but I'm quitting the band. This one was a no-brainer, as this is no longer the type of band I want to be in. I want to be in a soul fusion band. I met with some musicians the last couple of weeks and decided to form a band with a sax player named Blue Moe and a bass player named Skeets Ding Dong. 
we're going to call ourselves Soul Fucius. It's a play on the name of the philosopher Confucius while at the same time letting people know we're a soul fusion band. I thought of the name and the other guys love it. So that's that. I just want to say that I hope there's no hard feelings, but I also want to say that I'm so glad I'm not in your band anymore. I think ZZ Top is the dumbest name. I think the songs suck. I hate all of you guys, and I have no doubt you will fail while Soul Fucius ascends to the peak of rock and roll success mountain. Good luck finding another keyboard player, a.k.a. the backbone of this band. Dave. So, um, you know, those letters fucked me up pretty bad. And um, it's been a real hard process writing this book and sharing it and reading these letters, even though they're not real. It's still very difficult for me. Um, so if I cry real tears, maybe that's weird. I'd like to show you something that I found a few things in the process of uh, finding these letters. This is a t-shirt that I guess my dad must have had, you know, band shirts made for Sulfucius. And, you know, when I found this, it was, it was exciting and thrilling and also very upsetting. You know, I mean, look how it just perfectly faded and worn that shirt is. And, you know, I could have been like a teenage kid wearing that thing. You have to work very, very hard to get a t-shirt that broken in and looking that cool. You know, now they, you know, you go to Diesel and they make these shitty fake looking, you know, faded shirts and I just ha could have had the real thing. So I was very upset that I did not get to wear this as a kid until it absolutely fell apart. But, you know, I will give my dad credit. It's a nice design. Uh, I think the red looks real nice against the faded gray and I'm impressed, you know, how the color stayed pretty true while the rest of the shirt faded. This is a photo of, uh, me and my dad and my sister and you know if you didn't know any better you'd look at that photo and think fucking cool dad <laughs> look how cool that dad is muscle a muscle v-neck sweater <laughs> i mean it's not a v-neck i guess but it's a mu it's a sweater it's a i mean it's crazy and he was he was into motown he played basketball he was really good at basketball so you'd think he was a cool dad and like look at how he how he dressed me i had that sweet vest I had that number 19 short sleeve sweatshirt that I loved. It caught fire for one fourth of July. And it turns out that dad was a fucking asshole. <laughs> Another shot, me as a teen with uh, my favorite long sleeve soccer goalie Adidas shirt and my super small Patagonia yellow shorts. <laughs> hanging out in my sister's room. And again, you'd look at this photo and go, man, Glazer is, he's lucky. Look at that cool dad. Super cool dad. Those shades, you know he's high on weed. <laughs> it's the only reason he's wearing those glasses inside because he doesn't want his son. He, he cares so much about his son, he doesn't want his son to realize he's high on weed. But he's really hiding lies. He's a fucking dick. <laughs> this next photo is the worst one of all. Um, this is my dad with my son. And my dad... I mean, I, it took me so long to take this photo because I sat and watched, waiting, waiting. Or I should say I, I wasn't waiting because I didn't know yet, but wondering if he's going to play that piano. Never happened. And it's because uh, he's a liar. He knows how to play that piano. I fucked up that joke. <laughs> it's my dad's fault. He fucking got on my head and fucking me. The point is, he's an asshole who didn't play that piano for my son, knowing full well he could. Um, okay, we're going to move on. We're gonna, I'm going to read a few things uh, from the book. Uh, and I'm also going to have a friend of mine come up who's very nice to uh, join me tonight to read something from the book. Please welcome Scott Adsit. <laughs> Scott Adsit. Don't stop clapping till he gets up here. <laughs> 